Right, so I can't actually use the map on him. So stuff like the, uh, that painting... Whatever the painting thing is called with the whole... You know, the paints on the piece of wood or whatever in the brush. I had to use that item on the canvas back in the beginning of the game. It wouldn't use it automatically. But you're telling me now I can't use the map on him, so the map is given to him automatically? Gee, that's consistent, game. How are you today, then? Like you care. Is this the white dragon? That's what the big white letters on the prow spell out. What do you think? I'm looking for the captain. Is he around? What would you with the captain of the white dragon? I have a delivery for him, a map from the map merchant at the temple market. Aye. I be Captain Horatio Nebave of the White Dragon, fastest vessel there ever was. When there's wind. Hand the map over, girl. With Jarl's blessing, the wind will return soon, and I can leave this accursed harbor for sunnier shores. Looks pretty damn sunny to me. Oh no, I actually do give him the map. Okay, I take that back. Thank you. There's an errand for your trouble. All right, can't forget. Need to have him sign the delivery list. Sign okay. this, please. What is it? I need your signature to confirm that you've received the map. Map? What map? The one I just gave you. Oh, that one. Sorry, I never put my signature on a piece of paper. Um, sign it or I'll kill you. Sign it or I'll kill you. With what? A cross look? Hurtful words? Lots of yelling and shouting? Yes. I'll have my friends in the Mercurian Mafia pay you a visit. <laughs> the Mercurian what? Exactly. Please just sign the damn thing, would you? Sorry. It brings bad luck to give a piece of yourself in that manner. A signature has untold powers. It's part of your soul. I can't sign away my soul. Mm-hmm. Who told you that signing a slip of paper is bad for your soul? I'm from Guyen, and we're a spiritual people. Of course you our are. Our souls are in balance with our bodies, and the great Mojal has taught us not to endanger this balance. Signing my name, giving a piece of myself in that manner, breeds corruption and imbalance within. And it pisses the Mojal off no end. And that's why you choose to make my life difficult? Hey, blame organized religion. You're an idiot. You can't write, can you? Pardon? That's what this is all about. You can't write. Uh... So what? So what if I can't write? So what if I was born at sea and never spent more than a month ashore ever since? I still won't sign your accursed paper by Jal. Look, all you have to do is sign an X next to your name on the list. You can't trick the great Mojal. The Mojal's untrickable. That's not trickery. It's legally binding. I said no. Is there anything I can do to get you to sign? No. Well, yes. But, no. Look, Captain, I'm desperate here. I really, really need some kind of signature. Well, there's always music. I knew I would need to do that. What's music got to do with you signing my list? Nothing. But it distracts the mojo. What are you talking about? Why would you need to distract the... the... Mojal? I can't sign when there's a chance the Mojal is watching. Music distracts the Mojal. Ergo, I can sign. But doesn't that mean the Mojal is always distracted? I mean, there's always music somewhere in the world. The Mojal has an eye and an ear for every acolyte. And straying from the path can bring great wrath upon us. Granted, I know very little of the Mojal. 
But seriously, maybe you should look into alternative religions? Blasphemy! Besides, I only have to visit the temple once every two years, and the membership fees are quite reasonable. So, if I play some music, you'll sign? Aye. I'll give you that much. I'll be back. I don't doubt it for a second. Alright, let's go to the music stall. Wait a minute, do I have enough money for a musical instrument? I don't think one coin's going to do it. What's your, um, most affordable instrument? That's cute. The flute, right? And how much for the flute? I'm guessing that's one Aaron. Okay, I guess they're very cheap. I'll have the flute. That's one Aaron, isn't it? I think that's what happens when they can't afford to pay another voice actor. As luck would have it, I actually know how to play a flute. Not very well, but I'm sure the, uh, Mojal won't mind. They probably won't. Probably because they don't exist. It's a wooden flute. All right. What? That's not a song. That was a couple of notes. Okay, so how do I do this? Do I give it to him first and then... I'm ready to play some music if you're ready to sign. Aye, go on. But don't stop until I'm done signing, or the Mojo will surely wreak vengeance on us both. How long can it take to sign an X? Done. Here you go. And don't ever ask me to sign anything ever again. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Yeah, don't have to worry about that. Can I stab him in the face with this? Nope. Alright, let's go collect my commission, which is, what, isn't it one Aaron? Which is what I just spent on the flute, so I guess I'm going to come out with the same amount of money that I had just a minute ago. Right, your next assignment is a map of Shangagriel to the Rolling Man. Hold on, did you not ask me about him earlier today? Um... No, no, that wasn't me. That was somebody else. I could have sworn. Well, no matter. Uh, do you know how to get to the Rolling Man's house? I forget. 
Uh, let me explain, then. Now, pay attention, because this is complicated. He has chosen to live in the most inaccessible place in the city, but I guess he has his reasons. First, you head west off the marketplace on Oak until you get to a tiny little apothecary, Mrs. Cassop's Herbs and Oils, where you turn north on South Street, confusing that, for about four minutes of brisk walking. That's when you see a, a large grove of trees. It's a memorial to those who died in the last war with the tyrant back uh, the balance knows when. Can't see why they choose to remind us of that, where you'll turn left. That's west? No, left. That'll take you back south, but onto North Street instead. And that keeps you out of the Dalmari neighborhood. Down that way, nasty, nasty neighborhoods. Keep walking south or about, or was that north? Wait, wait, north on South Street, south on North Street, or the other way around. Anyway, find the Rose Bridge off uh, I Reed Avenue and cross it. There's a river? No, just a bridge. The river disappeared 500 years ago. No one knows what happened to it. After you've crossed the bridge, you'll be on the western slopes of Mercuria. And that's where West House... I mean, the Rolling Man lives. No, far from it, but you need to pass through that part of Mercuria to get to the Rolling Man. Keep south and watch out for the livestock. They're likely to attack in that part of town. Eventually you'll get to a large circular square. That's where they used to hold executions back when the city was civilized. You call murder civilized? Better than locking people up for years, as any level-headed person would tell you. Our freedom cannot be curtailed. Real men choose the honor of death to the shame of incarceration. Yeah, sure you do. Circle around the square and head down Tendak for half a mile. Or should that be Parrick Lane? Yes, Parrick Lane. Head west on Parrick Lane for uh, half a mile. Then turn okay, right. Great. North again? Uh, Is it a big... T no, only a... Big creature? Yes. The Good girl. Pass by the... I... Uh, yeah. What in the hell was the point of that? I don't even understand why... Why... Why did they do that? I'm not one that gets impatient at dialogue very often, but that... I quickly saw... Th I quickly saw that as being completely pointless. It was obvious I wasn't actually going to have to follow any directions, so what's the point? Wasn't funny. Wasn't clever. Just... just a waste of my time. Wait, I thought he was gonna pay me. Didn't, I thought he paid me one errand for every delivery plus whatever the person who I deliver to decides to tip me. Eh, whatever. Alright, let's go. The Rolling Man. Great view. Back home, a place like this would easily set you back tens of millions. Here, it's probably free. It's a brown, slightly cloudy liquor. That's probably Mr. Westhouse. Hello, Mr. Westhouse? Damn, Mason, what is it now? Oh, oh. <clears throat> Guess you're not, uh, you're not calling on behalf of that son of a bitch Sanya, are you? Sorry, I don't know who... No, no, that's very unlikely. From what I hear, he doesn't much enjoy the company of women. Well, who in damnation are you? April Ryan, sir. Ryan? <laughs> doesn't sound very Northlandian. Are you by any chance from the coast of... You hold on. Ryan? April Ryan? <laughs> I'll be damned. You're from Stark. Apparently. Until today, I thought I was just from Earth. I had no idea there were two of them. 
<laughs> Takes you by surprise, doesn't it? Well, goddamn. Sit down, Miss Ryan. Let me get you a drink. The liquor over here stinks to high heaven. Magic pollutes the purity of the spirit, but I keep a bottle of Glenfiddich for special occasions. Thanks for the offer, sir, but I didn't come here to have a drink. Really? I see. This isn't a social call. No, sorry. Oh, no matter. It's still a pleasant surprise to meet someone from home. <laughs> now... <clears throat> What may I do for you? I have a delivery for you. A delivery? When did the U.S. Postal Service start delivering mail to Arcadia? <laughs> it's from the map merchant at the market. It's just a map. Oh, good. I've been waiting for you. Well, hold your horses. What are you doing working for the Guild? Are you planning on staying in Mercuria? I'd strongly advise against it, Miss Ryan. Arcadia may look like a pastoral fairy tale realm, but it's not. You bleed as easily here as you do in Stark, and magic can do more damage than a gun. I'm not planning on staying, but I had to find you. The map merchant was the only one who knew where you lived, and he wouldn't tell me. So I got him to hire me, and you were the second delivery on my list. Dear gods. Carrick and his misguided loyalty. I'll have a word with the man. Thanks for the map, though. I collect them. There's not much else to do in this godforsaken city. Cortez told me to look you up. He did, did he? I see. <clears throat> Who's Cortez? You don't know him? I think not. I'd certainly remember. Did, did you say Cortez? You, you wouldn't be talking about old Manny Chavez, would you? Well, he ought to be dead by now, but then, by all rights, uh, <laughs> so should I. I don't know his first name, but he calls himself Cortez. Tall fellow, mysterious and elusive, rarely answers a question with a simple yes or no. Smokes like a chimney? Aside from that bit about smoking like a chimney, it sounds exactly like Cortez. Manny. I'll be damned. That old crook is still around. Well, how the devil is he? He's good. Where do you know him from? Oh, my old life back in Stark. We had some exciting adventures, him and I. Actually, he's part of the reason I ended up here. I last saw him in the winter of 1934. But that's almost 300 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? And I'm sure he doesn't look a day older than he did back then. The handsome devil. <laughs> Well, if I'm going to accept magic in parallel worlds, I might as well accept people living 300 years. Oh, no, you misunderstand. <clears throat> I'm only 46. I arrived here about 15 years ago, but I, I left Stark in 1934. Between the worlds where you dream, time has little meaning. I was trapped, you see, for, for quite a while. For oh. 300 years? Time went by pretty fast. It didn't seem so bad at the time, but now that you mention 300 years, quite disconcerting, really. Quite disconcerting. How did you end up here in Mercuria? <laughs> That's quite a story. I won't bore you with the details, but suffice it to say... I was always somewhat of an adventurer. The promise of virgin territory untouched by civilization held great sway with me in my youth, as did the idea of a highly spiritual state of mind, the occult, magic, karma. I was born in 1902 in Boston, 
By the time I was 17, I'd put that life behind me. I spent the next three years at sea, and then I wandered around Europe for a time. In the early 30s, the 1930s, of course, I found myself in India working as a journalist. That's where I met Manny, and that's where I first heard of Arcadia. I was amazed and quite skeptical at first, but the thought of a whole new world to see and magic? <laughs> I was a fool, of course, but who knew where my curiosity would bring me? So what happened in India? I've tried to forget about it, to be honest. If I could go back and convince myself not to... Oh, but I still wouldn't have listened, of course. The unknown attracts. I ended up in Tibet in the winter of 34, wading through snow up to my chest, thinking for sure that this was it, and I was going to die. Manny pulled me out of that one, thank God. I spent three months in a monastery before pushing on into the void. There's only one way for a non-shifter to pass through the divide, and it's not an easy road to take. Now, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'd prefer not to talk about the past anymore. There's more than enough to worry about in the present. Cortez said to look you up when I wanted to go back home, to Stark. Now, why would he say that? I'm not a shifter, and I, I don't know any magic. I'm sorry, Miss Ryan, but you'd be better off asking the Sentinel Priests for assistance. Already did. They said I was on my own, that they couldn't help me. Bloody typical. Those reactionary fools wouldn't extend a hand to help a drowning man if it violated the principles of their bloody balance. But I can't think why Manny would tell you to visit me in order to shift home. It just doesn't make sense. I should get going. Very well. You're welcome back at any time, Miss Ryan. Any time. Thank you, sir. I'll remember that. Hold on one second, Miss Ryan. I just remembered something. It's such a long time ago, I'd almost forgotten, but Manny did give me something that might be of interest. What is it? It's a pocket watch. Manny gave it to me the last time I saw him. I never quite understood why, but maybe you can tell me. Did he say anything about it? He said that when his heart started beating again, he would know. It would be like a message in Morse code, a beacon. Damn watch never worked, and the winding mechanism is broken, so it's probably not worth much. You're welcome to it, if it's any help. Thanks. Great, so I've got a broken pocket watch. It's an antique pocket watch. It's not ticking. The knob used for winding the watch seems to have broken off, and there's only a tiny hole left. Hmm. Why don't you shove the push pin in the hole? If I insert this pin carefully into the hole... Wait, are you serious? Like so, and then slowly wind it... I didn't actually think that would work. It okay. worked! It's ticking! I did it! It's a shift! I can go home! By God, it's a shift. I haven't seen one for ages. Why don't you come back with me, Mr. Westhouse? You could say hello to your old friend, Manny. If I tried to step through that, Miss Ryan, I would suffer a most unpleasant experience. And I would be lost in the between forever. Besides, I built this house with my own two hands. I wouldn't want to leave it to these barbarians. And what does your Stark have to offer me? This world is more recognizable to me now. 
Now you go ahead, Miss Ryan. Go back. And don't let your curiosity of the unknown tempt you into making another shift. Thanks for your help. Say hello to Manny for me. Tell him... Tell him I'm doing all right. And then I said... Thanks. Okay, bye. Game's over. Hope you enjoyed. No, seriously, Jess. though, what the hell happens now? Oh, God, it's real. It's all true. I saw it. I saw the other world. Arcadia. Either I'm going crazy, or you were right about everything. Hey, let's hope for the latter, eh, mi amiga? So I gather your trip was a success. Success? My whole world has been turned topsy-turvy, so I don't think success is the right word. Nothing about it makes sense. Fact is, I don't believe in magic. The sun does not need you to believe in it to rise in the morning, senorita. You have seen the truth with your own two eyes. I can do nothing more to convince you. It is up to you now. Well? Do I have a choice? I have to believe at least some of it. My life wouldn't make much sense otherwise. You are a true skeptic, April. Está bien. We need your kind to balance the hopeless romantics like myself. Who are you really, Cortez? Excuse me? People knew you over there in Arcadia. Tobias. He didn't know you by your real name, but he did know you. And Mr. Westhouse, he knew you too, as Chavez, but several hundred years ago. So my secrets are being revealed, are they? I wouldn't say that, because you're still a mystery to me. More so. Good. You see, senorita, mystery is important. To know everything, to know the whole truth is dull. There is no magic in that. Magic is not knowing. Magic is, is wondering about what and, and how and where. I'd settle for the truth, just to be able to know you. Because, uh, honestly, I don't mean this in a bad way. You scare me, Cortez. I'm afraid of you. And you are not the only one, mi amiga. I'm sorry, but whatever it is about me that mystifies you, it will have to stay a secret. There are... There are things even you should not know. Gee, thanks. That really helped. Yeah, cleared everything up there. Perdona me. Perhaps later, when we are certain of what the future holds, okay? I think I can promise you that, Senorita Ryan. Later. But for now, we must speak of more important matters. What happens now? The Minstrom told you about the balance. About Stark and Arcadia. A man named Tobias? He was called the Vestrum, I think. Vestrum Tobias. Ah, so Tobias made Vestrum que bien good. I knew he would go far when I first met him years ago. He was just an Instrum then, a student of the balance. But he was smart and resourceful. So you know what is going on with the balance. Tobias told me that the... Guardian? That the Guardian was missing and that the balance was failing. He said this would bring chaos into both worlds. As we are already seeing, your dreams, your nightmares, they are part of this. You sense chaos more keenly than most. But even they are beginning to notice that things are not as they should be. Like last night. What about last night? What you saw. You were not alone this time. There were others. And they saw the same thing. Not nightmares anymore. Real. The first sign of the damage chaos can do. The divide is being breached. It is not yet time for the worlds to be united. A breach could prove catastrophical. You helped me back, didn't you? To shift? See? The power is yours, yes? But for now, 
You need me to focus your powers, to call forth your dreams. Dreams? Yes. To travel from one world to the next, you must pass through the world of dreams. It is the only way. You are capable of opening a shift on your own, but you might not be able to. What do you mean? The power. The magic is within you. And when you sleep, sometimes you open the portal without even being aware of it. But when you're awake, it's more difficult. With practice, you will do it. I don't think I want to do it. You must. The worlds depend on it. So what do I do? We must work together, April. I can't do it alone, and neither can you. But what exactly is it that we have to do? Four things. We must find the Lost Guardian, we must locate the gateway to his realm, and the disk that is the key to his tower, and we must do what we can to curtail and defeat the Vanguard. Okay then, sounds pretty simple. So if I enter the other world through the world of dreams, then I guess that means that the very the very beginning of the game where I was in that I was on that like floating island thing with that talking tree and the dragon reptile thing. I guess that was probably real then, right? That was probably Arcadia. How are we going to find the Guardian? The moment he surrendered his throne and left his realm, he stepped back into our world, this world, Stark. This is where he was born, and so this is where he must return to. But he could be anywhere, right? This city has power, April. Not magic, but the opposite of magic. And it draws people to it like flies to an open fire. All the pieces of the puzzle come together here. You, me, the Vanguard, the Guardian. I can guarantee you that he's here. But where exactly, I do not know. I think maybe the Vanguard do. I think they may have him. If they have him, how are we going to get him back? And why do they need him? Why do we need him? He left his realm, but he's the last Guardian. And only he can open the doorway back to his realm to let his successor through. The Vanguard knows this, but what they don't know, yet, is how to get there. Who'd know about the gateway to the Guardian's realm? That I do not know. That knowledge wouldn't be here in Stark. You must go to Arcadia, study the books, talk with the Minstrom and others who might know, but not yet. First, we must finish our mission here. Where is the key to the Guardian's realm? In Arcadia. The key contains two parts. One is the disc itself. The other is the four jewels. The eyes of the dragons. That gives the disc the properties of the balance and makes it complete. Where is the disc? The disc was left in the care of the Sentinel. 10,000 years ago. In the beginning, it was kept in the open, displayed for all to see. But not anymore. Not since thieves tried to make away with it. They will know where it is. Ask Tobias, Vestrom Tobias. Where are the four jewels? Ah, the eyes of the dragons. They are kept by the four dragons themselves. Two in Arcadia and two in Stark. The white dragon has one. As does the old one. These you must find yourself. I'll help you with the others. How do we defeat the Vanguard? The Vanguard are strong here and growing stronger. Even in Arcadia, they are gaining a foothold. And with the Tyrant on a leash, the future looks quite bleak. How do you know so much about what's going on in Arcadia? Voices whisper in my ear, Senorita. Voices that I trust. You're saying the Vanguard are strong here. How come I haven't heard about them? They don't go by that name here. Did you ever hear of the Church of Voltec? Sure. They're... Oh. 
That's the Vanguard? See. Si. Then they're big. Very big. But why do they... Why assume a different name here? In Arcadia, they flaunt their philosophy. They preach the destruction of the balance under the pretense of returning humankind to the glories of the past. Here, they cannot do that. So they have integrated themselves slowly but surely into society under the subterfuge of the New Age religion. And they've built a financial empire to match governments. They have that much money? The Vanguard own multinational companies. They own planets, April. They own armies. All they need is the balance, and they will own everything. The twin worlds will be at their mercy. So, we basically don't stand a chance, do we, against an enemy like that? If we hold at bay the forces of chaos, and if we ensure the natural continuation of the Guardian's role within the balance, then they will have lost. How are we supposed to fight this chaos you keep talking about? You're the key, April. You have the power to shift, yes? But there's more to you than that. You are a child of the balance. And you... no, that will have to wait. By just being alive, you counter chaos. Without you, last night might have turned out much worse. That tiny breach might have been permanent. I didn't do anything. Then imagine the power you wield when you really do something. Trust me on this, Amiga. It's instinctive to you to fight chaos. You see it so clearly, and you will know what to do. You are most needed in Arcadia, where chaos is a part of reality. The tidal wave will hit there first, and unless it's subdued before it hits Stark full force, we'll never stand a chance. So you will have to travel to Arcadia after we are done here. Okay, so that's it? Kick some Vanguard ass? Find the Guardian, locate the entrance to his realm, and a 10,000-year-old disc and four dragon eye jewels? And oh, April, make sure you do battle with the physical manifestations of chaos along the way, because hey, <laughs> that's your destiny. It's impossible, Cortez. I can't do these things. I'm 18. I'm an artist. No, not even that. I'm nobody. You can't place all these responsibilities on my shoulders. I can't carry that much. I will help you, April. Others, too. You're not alone. Well, I feel very alone, and I can't even tell anybody about this. Yeah, hi. How are you? I'm the Chosen One. Can you help me save the world from evil and chaos? There is no Chosen One, April. There are only those who would and those who wouldn't. You have a choice between the two. You said I had powers. That I wasn't like everybody else. True. But you still have a choice. Prophecies can never unravel the will of a single human. You are one of many possible paths, but unfortunately, most of the alternative paths have been blocked by... circumstances beyond our control. The world does depend on you, but you have not been chosen. You choose for yourself what you are and what you will be. What happens if I choose no, no way? I am not a fortune teller, nor am I a Venar. What will happen? Something else? That's all I can tell you. Something else. But I'm sure it won't be anything good. Not unless you agree to help. But I can't do it. I'm not who you think I am. I'm not your savior. I don't have any magic powers. I'm just this girl. I'm just... Me. The choice is yours, April. As always, the choice is yours. It's not much of a choice, is it? For what it's worth? Perhaps not. Still, you need to come to the decision on your own. Then the choice will have to be... Yes, let's save the world. Where do we start? Here, in Newport. We must find out about the Vanguard. Their headquarters are in this city, but where? Do they have the Guardian under lock and key? What are their weaknesses? Once we've done that, 
You must travel to Arcadia. I cannot go there, and besides, I have things to take care of here. Right. Except, where the hell do I go to find out about the Vanguard? The library? The net? Valuable information is hard to find. Remember the painting I showed you yesterday? Sure. The artist. A boy named Warren. I told you about him, yes? Warren is involved in a lot of activities that, um, aren't exactly legal. He has connections. He can point us in the right direction. All right, okay. Where do I find him? My friend, Father Raul at the Hope Street Cathedral, he's had some contact with the boy lately. Ask him. Wait, did you say Hope Street? Yes. As in the most dangerous neighborhood in Newport? Is it? <laughs> I don't usually follow the civic affairs of the city. I remember Hope Street when they first built it. A clean neighborhood. That must have been a very long time ago. Still, I'm sure you'll be safe. You're a girl, no? A self-respecting gentleman would never harm a girl. <laughs> It's the self-respecting gentleman part I'm concerned about. Yeah. Still, I can handle myself. Father Raoul, was it? At the Hope Street Cathedral? Yes. He will lead you in the right direction. Help you find Warren Hughes. When you're done tomorrow, we will meet up at the cathedral late in the afternoon. I need to speak with Raoul as well. Okay. Good. It's a plan, then? Enjoy yourself tonight, April. Who knows what the future may hold? Good night. Okay, then. Let's see what I've written. All right. So I think right now I just need to go to sleep. Even though it's not dark yet. Hey, aren't I supposed to meet that jackass? Um... What was his name? Zack? I don't know. Fuck him. The watch is ticking. Am I actually supposed to go to sleep? I mean, it, it isn't dark. I don't think I'm supposed to find information yet. It said I'm supposed to do that tomorrow, right? I don't need to make my bed. It's been too hot to sleep with a... Okay. Maybe I actually go meet that idiot. Maybe I go to the cafe. Let's go to the cafe.
Hey, Charlie. Good to finally see a familiar face. Pulling long hours today, Charlie? Unfortunately, yeah. Are you staying for the show tonight? What show? You don't know who's playing? I've had a... You have other things on my mind these past few days, Charlie. Sorry. Anybody good? Anybody good? Are you kidding? Roy and Dale's playing. It's the first gig on their new tour. Sort of returning to their roots before they do the big venues. Tonight? Great, that's perfect. Especially tonight. I need some serious unwinding. Yeah? What's up? Um... How do I tell him? Well, I guess... Just go with this. I just had the weirdest experience of my life. Weirder than what happened here last night? Much weirder, trust me. I mean, what happened here... It could be explained. A hologram, rapture gas, mass suggestion. That's stretching it a little, don't you think? What, rather than the alternatives? That we're all either going crazy or that something's breaking through from another world? You don't think that's stretching it? I don't know what I think, April. I just know that sometimes there are things lurking in the shadows that can't be explained by science. That's deep, that the man. the world holds more mysteries than we think. Maybe. So what's this thing you were going to tell me about the weirdest experience of your life? You wouldn't believe me anyway, Charlie. Try me. No, really, I can't. It's too much, too close. I don't know if I believe it myself. Okay. You tell me about it later then, all right? Maybe. When does the concert start? In less than an hour. I expect the place to be crowded soon. So you should find yourself a spot to sit down. Is Emma around? Haven't seen her. She knows about the show, so she'll be here. Thanks, Charlie. No problem. Later. Okay, I guess she's gonna wait for the show. It's Emma, the weird mannequin-looking woman. Oh my gosh, she's terrifying looking. What's wrong with her? So she does not look human. Day? You didn't show up at school, you weren't at work, and then Fiona tells me you're out looking for Cortez again. And on top of that, Zach brags about bagging a date with you. What's up with that? Oh shit, Zach, I totally forgot. I He's didn't. gonna kill me. If I don't show up, that is. You mean it's true? You have a date with that asshole? I told him he was full of shit. I needed some information. And you sell yourself to get it? April, you're insane. Well, you're just going to have to disappoint him. I made a promise. To that sleaze bag? That's a promise made to be broken. Yeah, fuck that guy. You're right. I'm staying here. Good girl. Now, there are a couple guys you should keep an eye open for tonight. Me? I have a boyfriend, you need a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend because I have one and I need somebody to compare boyfriends with. Okay. It's not your choice to make, girl, it's just the natural order of things. I thought we were here to listen to the band. Sure, from the back, so we can scope out guys' asses. I don't know which place is weirder, Mercuria or the Fringe Cafe on any given night. Mark what? Never mind. So, okay, which guys are we looking for? Right. Now, you may want to take notes. Cutscene, Chapter 3. Friends and Enemies. Oh, God. Headache. I didn't really have that much to drink, did I? No. But I did travel through a shift into a parallel universe, which would explain this weird compulsion to curl up into a fetal position and go back to sleep. 
Not that I'm particularly looking forward to it, but I guess I have to go find that Warren guy Cortez told me about down on Hope Street. And hey, like that's not enough. I have to avoid bumping into Zack today. He's probably royally pissed that I stood him up, and Zack's very good at being pissed. I'm thinking he's probably just going to be right outside of my door. But why try to avoid him? Fuck him. I don't care. Yeah, I'm going to bet that Zack is right outside. Let's see. What do you know? Hey, Zack, how was your night? So you thought you could stand me up and get away with it, bitch? I'm Fuck sorry. Fuck you. What did you call me? We have a date and then you don't show? Leave me looking like a sad prick all night in front of my friends? I couldn't go, Zack. Get over it. I don't fucking care. You'll regret fucking with me, bitch. I can promise you that. I don't think I will. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You'll find out, April Ryan. You're gonna be so fucking sorry you ever fucked with me. Okay, good talking with you. Bye. All right, Hope Street. Gotta go to the subway. That guy looks like he's wearing a motion capture shoot. Uh, motion capture. Capture. Jesus, capture. Motion capture suit. Usually people doing motion capture don't wear blue caps, but the black suit looks just like it. Hey, wait a minute, isn't that... That's the... That's the same woman that was just over here. Whoa, wait, wait, go back, no. Damn it. Hold on just a second. Yeah, look at that, look at that model. And then look at this woman. Right here. That's the same one. Wow, they did not have very many models. Little bit of variety might have been a good idea there. I'm really glad I got a weekly pass at this point. Definitely coming in handy. I wonder if that actually makes any difference in the in how the game in what happens with the game. If you get a daily pass versus a weekly pass. I mean if I got a daily pass, and I guess I would have had to get another daily pass today, but is that the only difference it would make? I don't know. Let's go to Hope Street. Oh yeah, this looks like a great neighborhood. What the? Does that guy have like a huge cancerous growth on his neck or something? What is that? She's gone. N no, she's right there. She's still there. She's gone. Okay. Sure. Looks like he knows how to use that steel pipe. Looks like he knows how to use that steel pipe. I think he's in trouble. Gee, how did you figure that out? Eighty-seven. All right, looks like there's only one way to go.
cabs never stop on Hope Street. Okay, I'm back. I was gone for almost a half hour, but I guess it's, prob it's probably only about a second for you. That must be strange. It's been a second for you, but a half hour for me. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll play for like five more minutes and then end the episode. Pretty. And considering the neighborhood, it's a miracle that it's still intact. Maybe it's bulletproof stained glass designed for inner city cathedrals. I wonder how they light those candles. Do they have ladders? Or jetpacks? That's a funky idea. <laughs> Priests with rockets on their backs. That would give a whole new dimension to evening services. Yes, it would. There you are. It's the confessional. It's a priest. I'm guessing that's the one I want to talk to? What was his name? Raul or something? Good morning. I'm Father Raul. You're not a Hope Street regular, are you? I haven't seen you here before. I don't visit the neighborhood very often, no. And why should you? It's not a very nice place. This cathedral is all there's left of the hope in Hope Street. I'm sorry to hear that, Father. So am I. But we cope. We cope. How may I be of assistance? I actually don't know. I don't... I can't remember why... Cortez sent me here. It was... Warren. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, now I know. Do you know a boy named Warren Hughes? As a matter of fact, I do. The Hugheses were regulars before they... traveled to the colonies. Poor Warren was left an orphan by his family. I haven't seen him for years. Where does Warren live? I'm not sure he lives anywhere. But he does belong to a Hope Street gang, the Razor Blades, I believe. They seem to conjugate just down the street in Building 87. You don't Be careful, say! Though. Although they're far from the worst gang around here, they're not a particularly friendly lot, and they don't care for strangers. I can take care of myself. <laughs> I don't doubt that. Still, be careful. Thank you, Father. Please come by again if you're ever in the neighborhood. Yeah, I'm sure I'll just be it's in a this neighborhood. angel. A cherub? He's got a red robe wrapped around his posterior, and he looks to be in a hurry. I can't remember reading about this particular incident in the Bible. Maybe it was in the, um, the sequel? Nah. That came out only five years ago, and this wall painting looks a lot older than that. <laughs> like I was going to say, yeah, I don't think I'm just going to... Be in this neighborhood, uh, taking a nice stroll down the street to look at the sights of druggies overdosing. So I don't think I'll just be in the neighborhood. I thought I was actually clicking here to the exit, but I accidentally clicked on that. Alright, let's go talk to the, to the gang of youths. The razor blades. Where am I? Oh, there I am. She's gone. No, she's still there, April. She's right there. She's gone. Whatever you say. Is, is that him? Looks like he's ten years old. It's out of order. It's a boy. He looks to be about 15 or so. You sure about that? Wait, if this is talk to him, then what's this? Hit him? Slap him? 
High five him? Nah, he's sweet, but a little too young for me. Can I talk to you for a minute? You know where I can find a kid named Warren Hughes? Who's asking? Let me guess, that's him. Um, I am. <coughs> Warren Hughes. Never heard of him. Bullshit. What's your name? What's yours? April Ryan. Lucky you. What? All right, well, I guess you can't help me. Nope. Nobody can. What do you mean? A nice, pretty girl like you in a neighborhood like this, asking all the wrong questions. You're heading for some serious trouble, you know. I can take care of myself. Mm-hmm. Sure you can. The thing is, there are four guys waiting downstairs for you to come back out, and they can take care of themselves real good. Don't threaten me. I ain't threatening you, girl. I'm just telling you how it is. You're in deep shit, and you've only got yourself to blame. No, I don't think I would only have myself to blame, actually. I think I would blame the four people that are apparently downstairs waiting for me to come out. I think I would blame them. What do you want from me? I should have asked you the same question. Except I don't care. You should have thought twice before coming after me. After you? I didn't come... So you're Warren. What? Like you didn't know? No. Cortez told me your name, where to find you, but... Hold on. Cortez? Old Spanish talking dude. Real crazy in the head? <laughs> Everyone knows That's him. That's a fair description, yeah. Shit. You're not a cop. Social services? You're corporate? No, no, I'm a... A friend of Cortez. He said to look you up. I haven't seen Cortez in a while. Not since before. So what does Senior Cortez want with me? We need some help. What kind of help? Look, I gotta stay incognito most of the time now that corporates and cops are stepping up their search for us. I can't go risking my ass for nobody. Not even Cortez. That's all right. I just need some information on a group called the Vanguard and their leader, Jacob McAllen. Oh, sorry. Never heard of those guys. You wouldn't have. They keep to themselves, and they got some kind of cover operation going, but I don't know what it is, and... You want... need to find out? All right, here's the thing. I got a friend who might be able to help you out. Great! Hold on. Before I use up my favors with him, I need you to do me a favor in return. Probably even help yourself out at the same time. Fair enough. What do I have to do? Easy. Break into the Newport Police Department computer archives. Get me some information on my family. Destroy my criminal record and get the hell out of there. Preferably alive. That's easy? Did he seriously just say that's easy? Like it's a breeze? Sure. I'll do it. You got guts, girl. That's cool. Besides, there's probably some information on the... Vanguards, was it? In the archives. And that information will be valuable to my friend if he's gonna help you. So here's the thing. My dad doped out on raps and seduced by commercials. Sold out our whole family to the shiny happy colonization program for a lifetime supply of the big R. The Rapture. He neglected to ask his lovely wife and children, and the corporates didn't care. One day they came to pick up my mom, my sister, and me. I got away, though. Snuck out the window. I spent the next two weeks in a dumpster. And your family? That's just it. I don't know. Off to the colonies, of course, but which one? I don't know. Sometimes they split up families, too. You know, they don't tell you that in their ads. I don't give a shit about my dad, and my mom, she's tough. She can take care of herself, but I want my sister back. We were real tight. I'm not going to let him use her in the mines and factories out there. So, you want me to find out where they took your sister? That's it. You're catching on. You do that for me, and delete my criminal record at the same time to get them damn corporates off my ass. I'll give you all the help you need. Alright, sounds like a deal. Where is the police station? Where is the police station? Take the subway to Metro West. You'll come out on what they call Cop Street. You'll see the NPD headquarters down the block. You can't miss it. I can't imagine why it's called Cop Street. 
I'd better get going. Be cool, eh? Sure, I'll be cool. Okay. Well, let me save my game again, even though I just did it. And I'm going to end this episode here. So I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.